Do you ever think about me? Did you ever think you'd get a second chance? So I guess this is the scene where I grab you and kiss you <laughs> passionately then. You lied to me. Don't miss your entrance. Did you ever think you'd get two? Anyway, how about this one? That's the one. Yeah? I'm sure of it. All right. Shoes. Oh, God, shoes. They always oh, forget God. the shoes. Oh. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. I call you JR like everyone else? Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry I didn't get my hair done. Oh, um, yeah. Same with me. <laughs> I, was gonna have my, I was gonna look nice for the interview and have my head buffered, but not today. I didn't want to do I, it. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, JR, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for joining me. Talk about Remember Yesterday, your first feature film. Congratulations. Thank you very much. For, I feel very fortunate. Thank you. Oh, you've done a lot of, well, a lot of people have claimed to want to do, but you've actually done it. So congrats. that's the challenge right there. That's how I spent the nineties. I spent the nineties saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then I went and got another beer and I stayed in the beer bottle for another, uh, I don't know, another 10 years. So well, finally you... uh, gave up the booze and decided that uh, all those things I talked about, I look like an idiot if I don't do it. So I started doing them. Well, you're to be congratulated. So can you set the film up for us though? Um, yeah, what happens is um, <clears throat> there are flashbacks in it, so bear with me a little bit. The, it starts with a woman just contemplating uh, the past that got away from her, um, and that's Jenny. That's the lead character Jenny Allen plays. Um, she's recently separated from her husband. Uh, he's an alcoholic and a womanizer, but his family is very, very rich, so she settled on the best bachelor in town financially she never loved him but he was also best friends with the guy she did love they were the best of pals so the three of them hung around when they were kids um and all of a sudden there's this rumor of this movie coming to town well her ex-love john he's a filmmaker pretty famous filmmaker and um they're wondering if it's him well it is if it wasn't we wouldn't have a story um so he brings the thing to town um davy the ex-husband some of the other folks they don't want him there because he's a hollywood guy and and they don't need that in their life anymore all those dreams and whatever and jenny's one of them she was like i don't just do whatever it is you're going to do but don't bother me with it and she she wants to go back to the theater she catches up with the artistic director of one of the local theater companies in town and uh, Catherine basically looks at her and says i look at photos too you can't ignore the past but you can't always go back to what it was maybe you're older now maybe it maybe it does exist now maybe you understand what it is now and so actually the insecurities that Jenny had as a kid, now John has in the later part of the movie. And she turns that on him. And then we come to the end of it and it's a very sweet little thing, but she gets back in the theater, she moves to New York, and maybe this happens, maybe that happens. Well, I, you're an actor turned director and, you know, I went right. to film school and in screenwriting class, they always tell you, write what you know. So is this about, did you get a second chance in real life? Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. When I gave up the booze, I, it, um, there's a casting director, a friend of mine, he's been a friend of mine for a long, long time. His name's Craig Finn Cannon. And he brought me in to actually talk to some of these young kids that just graduated from school from you know, Chapel Hill and Duke and East Carolina and some of these other places. He brought me in to, to speak to him because I had started, I, I put together like four scripts like that. And the way Craig described it was, is that everything that was blocked by the booze is just falling out now. And I don't have a problem with anyone drinking. I, it's, I just couldn't do it myself. Um, I don't, I'm not that person, man. I, I don't judge anybody, man. <laughs> I'd rather sit on top of a mountaintop and meditate. Well, tell me about finding your two leads. When did you know, and what were you looking for when you found, you know, Jaina and Adrian? Um, the, it all hinged on Jana. It, it was weird. We, we tried this actress. We tried that actress. We tried a lot of, they even brought me in 
um, the casting director said, well, why don't, why don't you give it a shot? And we tried it with another actor, so whatever. And it just, I, you know, it was good. We didn't want it to be good. Uh, we knew it was an independent film and we wanted people to watch it. And if it's good, people aren't going to watch it. So um, Jen was out one night. Jen and Goley was our, um, our casting director. And we met up the next day at a coffee shop, which is actually in the movie. Um, and she said, do you know Gianna? And show me a picture of her on phone. I said, no, I don't. And she showed me a clip of something Gianna had done. I hope that doesn't get her in trouble. But uh, then I just started staring at her headshot. And I said, okay, she's it. She's, she's the one. And Jen's like, what do you want to meet her? She's, and I said, yeah, yeah, sure, fine, whatever. So we met, uh, I met Jana. I'd never met her before. And she said, well, I want to audition for you. I'm like, I don't, I'm an Aquarius. I don't, I go on feel. I go on feel with everything. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want to do it unless I can audition. I'm like, then go audition. It's fine. Go ahead, tape something, send it to Jen, whatever. And then three days later, as it's supposed to be, I'll tell you, you have the role again. <laughs> and so um, we did. And um, once she got into place, everything started literally two days after we cast Jana. I'm walking down the street and I see my old friend Adrian Monte because we couldn't find John because we didn't have a Jenny. And I see my buddy Adrian Monte and I said, Hey man, are you back? He's, he was back from Chicago. We all, there was a whole big contingent of Wilmington folks that lived in Chicago at one time. And uh, I said, are you back from Chicago? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just moved back not long ago. I'm like, you want to read a movie? He's like, yeah, I'll read it. Call me up the next day. He's like, what do you want me to do, man? I'll do this, man. This is great. I'm like, I want you to play John. He's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Really? I'm like, yeah, I want you to play John. He's like, do you want me to read for it? I'm like, no. You know, I'd seen, I'd been on stage with Adrian a million times. And so we really didn't audition anything. We went on feel mainly because they were pieces. And they all seemed to be friends at one time. The wild card was um, Stephen Bear Burley, which is Frack as well, uh, Hyman, uh, uh, Kaz. And we got him late. I had seen him in a production of Fences. And I asked uh, the artistic director of that theater company, I said, can he do comedy? And he said, yeah, he's actually very funny. He had done The Odd Couple for him. I was out of town and he said, they had done The Odd Couple for me. I'm like, okay, I'd like to talk to him. And so I met Kaz and I said, would you read this for me? And he did. And the next thing I know, I'm just saying, look, we're going to be shooting you on this date. He's like, shooting me for what? I said, I want you to be in the movie. He's like, oh, great. Yeah, we'll do it. So the only, the only person that didn't fit the original bill was Kaz. I had written it for a buddy of mine who couldn't do it because he was touring with Thoroughly Modern Millie, I think. Uh, and he was all around the country. And so the only one that didn't fit what my vision was for the film was Kaz. And then Kaz came in and he's wonderful. I mean, you just love him, I think. I, it, you know. it sounds like it's safe to say that you're an actor's director. Did you find that out while making your first feature? Ron Falica, the great Ron Falica who plays Davey, he's the, uh, he's the, he and his wife, uh, Allie McCulloch, own Actors Arsenal and that's where I go tape. I'm taping tomorrow. Um, but he said that to me, and he's got this laundry list of credits. And he said, JR, I'm having a little trouble justifying this. We were on set. He said, I'm having trouble justifying this. And I said, what would you say? And Ron says, well, I would say this. And then Adrian, who's standing over my shoulder, he's like, well, my response to that would be this. We basically reworked the whole scene right then. Ron looks at me, he's like, you're an actor's director. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know the first thing about lighting, so that's good, I think. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, 
Well, you know, JR, congratulations on your first feature film. Uh, and uh, it's coming on all digital platforms on Valentine's Day, too. So what perfect release date, huh? Yeah, we, we were lucky when um, when Gravitas said they gave us two dates. They said we could do uh, Valentine's Day or we could do April 16th. And I'm like, I, I don't know that we fit in tax season. <laughs> um, so uh, I said, what do we need to do to get February 14th? I called my producer, John Landau. And uh, I said, we have to get this, 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 and this to, uh, Gravitas today. So we had to call our, our editor. Ryan was asleep because he, he has, works the worst hours. <laughs> he works for, he's, he's, he's a cutter for a lot of different television shows. And so he works until way, way late at night. We called him like eight o'clock in the morning. His first response was, what the heck are you guys doing? I'm like, look, man, we need this to go to Gravitas today. So blindly he did it. He, he was like, okay, great, they got it. And uh, Gravitas came back and said, yeah, well, we're, we're set for February 14th. We're gonna have to make some adjustments or whatever. And Ryan slept for three days. <laughs> And uh, he was like, hey, did you guys call me the other day about like distribution? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we did. And you actually sent the stuff off. So we're good. He's like, who are we with? <laughs> I told him, I said, we're with Gravitas. He's like, my God, they're everywhere. So we feel we were over the moon that Gravitas wanted us. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Ace Spot. Good stuff. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it's a thrill talking to you. And let's talk again for your next feature, man. Let's talk to you I again. look forward to it. I got two more that... I want to get uh, cranking on one is a one is this it's a thriller about human trafficking in a small town and the other one is uh, about a, about it's about me it's about me and five of my dearest friends in the world and the stupid stuff we've done throughout our lives so I look forward to it. JR, thank, thank you so much for having me on I really appreciate this so much. My pleasure and come visit us in Las Vegas soon we'd love to have you. I would love to. Thank you so much.